Well, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Geek of What video. And today I've got a really, really exciting build video for you. Not that the others aren't normally exciting, but this one is a little bit special and I think the end result is gonna look phenomenal. Not only am I gonna be talking you through the components I chose, but I'm also gonna be building it along live so you can see exactly how it's done. I won't quite call it a tutorial, but it should be pretty damn close. So make sure you smash that like button, but let's get straight into it. Bookmark is an easy free website builder with a host of features, including e-commerce for making an online store. The coolest bit, it uses artificial intelligence, answers seven simple questions, and it creates the website in front of your eyes in less than two minutes for you to easily tweak and perfect. It's super cool and you can create your fully responsive site today at bookmark.com, linked in the description below. Now the first product I'm actually going to take a look at in today's video is the case and this is a brand new chassis from a company called Sharkoon. Now I'm just going to pop the case down here and take a quick look at some of the key features before we start building in it. Not only do you get two 120mm fans, one at the bottom and one at the rear, but you get a really unique uh, sort of two-tone black and white design with a fully spanning tempered glass side panel. We are of course going to need to take uh, this side panel off and thankfully it's really really easy. It's one of the easiest tempered glass panels on the market and just comes off like that. There's no faffing about with any flathead screws or anything like that, as you'll often find on competitor cases. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the inside of the chassis is that they've actually moved the power supply shield from the bottom up to the top. And that means you've got up to a 360 millimeter radiator that can go at the bottom. And it moves your intake fans uh, from the front where they traditionally sit uh, to the bottom of the case. This bottom intake is of course as well fully dust filtered or at least it was, and you get 220 millimeter fans included by default. They also do an RGB version of this case, uh, but I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different later on. The next thing we wanna do with the chassis is actually take off uh, that rear side panel so we can get a load of access uh, to everything in this case. Oh, no, 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 no. Now the first component we're actually going to be popping into the case is the power supply. It's a bit boring, but getting it out of the way early is going to be quite nice later on. This is the Cooler Master MWE 650 watt gold. Basically, it's a 650 watt fully modular power supply, meaning you only plug in the cables that you need with an 80 plus gold certification. That means it's going to run super duper efficiently at all times, which is going to make your system a bit more reliable, should last longer, and also save Save you money on energy at the wall. Now of course the key advantage of a fully modular power supply is that you only plug in the cables that you need, which really saves on cable clutter, rather than having all these plugged in by default and non-removable. It's going to make cable management at the back of this case a lot lot easier, which is a massive massive bonus. Now I'm also going to take this opportunity to plug in the necessary modular cables. Arguably it would have been easier to do this before I screwed it in, but it really is no biggie. We're going to need one SATA, one CPU, one GPU and one motherboard power cable. So let's go. Now the eagle-eyed among you will have actually noticed there is a hard drive cage in the top here next to our power supply and this is actually a great place to have it. Uh, trust me, you want to install this now before you get a whole rat's nest of cables because trust me, uh, that is coming because it's going to be super duper easy at this stage. Now in order to install the hard drive, you're going to want to grab these special screws from this brown box that was in that hard drive cage in the case, uh, which is really quite convenient and that's going to make installing our hard drive actually possible. Talking to the hard drive I selected, I went for a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda. Now this particular one here is a one terabyte drive because I can't quite find the two terabyte one, but I'd recommend you buy the two terabyte one if you are in the market for this system as it's gonna give you 2000 gigs of capacity for your movies, music, Steam and Origin libraries, uh, which is gonna be a much better option than a 1000 terabyte drive. Note from editing James to normal James, you're an idiot, a thousand gigabytes, not a thousand terabytes. So one terabyte, thousand gig, okay, bye. Oh, 
<laughs> now the next thing we're going to do is grab our CPU and our motherboard combination. For the CPU I selected the AMD Ryzen 5 2600. With a base clock of 3.4 and boost of 3.9 GHz, it's got decent single threaded performance, uh, but perhaps even better, with 6 cores and 12 threads, the multi-threaded side of this chip just excels. For the latest games that are starting to use up more and more cores and to future-proof this system, it's a great option. And it's also going to work uh, pretty well for a bit of video editing or game streaming, if that's what you're looking to get into. You can of course overclock this CPU with the motherboard we've selected for today's build, which is MSI's B450M Pro M2. Now, one of the greatest things about uh, AMD motherboards over their Intel counterparts is that you can actually overclock on much cheaper boards, and that means we're going to get some free performance, and you cannot moan at that. Now, installing our CPU in our motherboard is super duper easy. We're going to take out the motherboard from its box and then take out the IO shield because we don't want to forget to install that. That's this little silver thing here, and we're going to close back up the motherboard and use it as a bit of an anti static workstation in which uh, we can install our CPU. Just trying to give you the best view over here. Uh, that's not too shabby. Now, in order to install our CPU, it's super duper simple. You've got to pull up this little retention arm, like so. Easy. And we're then going to take the CPU, find the little golden triangle, which in this chip is right here, and line it up with the triangle on the CPU socket. Because this is an AMD CPU, it should just drop right into the holes, no pressure, no force needed, and the little arm will pop down, uh, just like so, back into its original position. Wasn't that easy? Now the next component we're going to be looking at as the backdrop for today's video slowly deteriorates in tidiness uh, is Cooler Master's Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition, which is of course our CPU cooler. Now I know what a lot of you will be thinking, James, AMD already includes some pretty kick-ass uh, stock coolers, especially compared uh, to Intel standards in the box for free. Now that is true, but they aren't going to give you any overclocking headroom, they're most definitely a lot louder than this Cooler Master alternative, and and trust me, they don't look half as nice. This is a good happy medium with a 35 36-ish dollar price tag, though prices are subject to change, and the latest prices for different regions and retailers can be found at the links in the description below. With that being said, let's get this out of the box, install it onto our CPU now, because it's going to save us a headache later on. Now, when installing any CPU cooler, you are going to have to swallow your pride, guys, and pick up the manual, because otherwise you're just going to be completely bewildered. I mean, I've got to keep the fan off for a second before we install the memory, but just how good does this sort of all black design look? It's going to complement the black and white in the case really, really nicely indeed. Now that brings us on nicely to the next component in today's build, which is of course the memory, and I'm so excited for this part. This is Adata's brand new XPG Spectrix D60G. It's been out no longer than a week by the time you're watching this, and a massive thank you to Adata for sending it out so that I can get an early first look. Look. I love their RGB RAM and have done for a while and this memory kit should be no different. Oh my, look at that. That looks so, so good. Like the whole thing's like a diffused RGB with like that brushed metal. Uh, and it's like pretty low profile as well as so it isn't going to interfere with our CPU cooler and stuff, which is a massive, massive bonus. Now this particular kit here is two 8GB DIMMs, so 16GB, uh, with a 3000MHz clock speed, and that's going to be a really good option for a Ryzen CPU. Fast memory is not quite so important with Intel chips, but AMD chips, they do really benefit from it. Installing memory is really, really simple, we'll just move this out of the way. All you've got to do is find the notch on the memory and align it with the notch on the motherboard. Pull back the two clips on either side of the DIMM slot and... Boom, it's in, that really is all there is to it. If you missed that one, don't worry, we've got a second one to go. Line it up, pop it in, boom. You have to give it a little bit of pressure, but it's gonna go on absolutely no problem. At this stage, we could put our CPU cooler fan back on, but I think it's gonna be easier if we wait till the motherboard assembly is into the case. 
There is one more thing we need to do though before we shove this motherboard assembly into the case and it's once again linked to storage. Now a few moments ago you will have noticed, I hope, that we installed that 2TB Seagate Barracuda hard drive. Whilst that's going to be fantastic for all our movies, music, games, Steam, Origin libraries, it's not particularly quick. Uh, so to sort of give it a helping hand, we've got this Adata XPG SX8200 Pro. It's a 512GB uh, M.2 drive that boasts read and write speeds of up to three and a half gigabytes per second, which is insane. Uh, that's gonna make our system turn on super quick and give you room for your most frequently used files, uh, applications, and even a couple of games with this amount of capacity. This is currently selling as well for about $75, though description below for the latest pricing, which is insane for half a terabyte of SSD storage. It's mental how much pricing on a lot of this stuff has come down in the past year or so. Now is really a great time to build a PC. Installing your M.2 SSD is easy. You're gonna need a smaller screwdriver than a standard Phillips head. And then all you've got to do is slide the SSD into the slot and screw it down with that standoff to keep it nice and secure. Right then, so now our motherboard assembly is all nice and built up upon, we're going to pop it into the case. And this is a much uh, easier way around of doing things than trying to faff about inside the chassis itself. First off though, we're going to install the motherboard IO shield. I probably should have done this when I had the case out earlier, but I was a bit forgetful. I'm also in this instance gonna take out this rear fan as I'm gonna be putting uh, this down the bottom of the case, though you don't need to uninstall it before you put your motherboard in. There is plenty of room to play with. Now it's at this stage of the video where I crack out one of the surprises of today. This is Cordermaster's brand new sleeved extension cable kit. This is what I've spent some of the leftover budget of today's $1,000 budget on, and this is gonna make the system look a whole load better. Just trust me. Now the next thing you'll notice is not only how good the sleeved cable extensions look, but I've pre-ran one for our GPU and popped our CPU uh, cooler fan back on as well, which was a bit tight with the memory, but it does indeed fit. The next thing we need to do is plug in all of our cases, front or top panel uh, in this scenario, those connectors, uh, before we pop our GPU in, because it is going to get just a little bit tight. Now with everything nicely cable managed in, it's a great time to install our GPU. And this one is a bit of a beast. Uh, this is NVIDIA's brand new RTX 2060. This build is literally full of brand new hardware from that SSD to that memory, to the brand new CPU cooler, brand new chassis, and now the brand new GPU. The RTX 2060 is Quite possibly the best 1440p gaming card on the market right now when everything's considered, including, of course, price to performance ratios. This particular card is actually NVIDIA's Founders Edition. Now, NVIDIA are selling this themselves uh, directly on their website, and you can get this for around $350, which is an absolutely amazing deal. If you can't find this Founders Edition, though, which I think looks incredible. You cannot for something from Zotac and I will leave all the options down in the description below. This one though is going to fit perfectly, sorry, into today's build. Installing a graphics card is one of the easiest things to do in the world. All you've got to do is line up with the slot, pull back the retention clip and undo a couple of screws and now push it pretty evenly but with a bit of force and it will click nicely into place. We've then just got to use the screws to tie it down, keep it in place uh, shall we say, and this bad boy is going nowhere. Now then, with pretty much everything installed, we're gonna change a couple of the fans in a moment. All that's left to do is cable manage it, and this is gonna be a little bit time consuming, so roll the time lapse. I 
And with that, that just about wraps up today's build. I genuinely can't get over how good this looks. All that's left to do now is to put the side panels on, turn the lights off, and boot this PC up to see just how good it looks. Now, snazzy montage aside, it raises the question, just how well does this PC perform? So let me answer it for you very, very well indeed. 1440p gaming is very much going to be the sweet spot, though a bit of 4K is more than possible if you're prepared to sacrifice a few settings and a little bit of frame rate. Uh, the ray tracing functionality on this RTX 2060 is going to look fantastic uh, in games such as the new Battlefield title and in conjunction with the LSS should give you some really playable frame rates and some enjoyable gaming experiences. But that I think just about wraps it up for today's build. If you did enjoy it, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And do ding dong that notification bell so you never miss another upload. Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter. It's at GeekerWatt uh, and at GeekerWatt. And as always, we'll see you in the next GeekerWatt video.